Hey, it's Dr. Karn. In this video, I want to talk about the process of outgrowing friends and looking at it from a spiritual perspective. Because as you're going through your evolutionary process, it's really natural that you're going to outgrow certain relationships in your life. I want to give you some tips and tools on how to navigate this really smoothly. Let's jump in. So if you're here and you want the spiritual perspective on letting go of friends and relationships and all this changing that's going on in your life, congratulations, because it means you're evolving. I know it can be one of the hardest parts of growth specific to spiritual awakening. So when you're going through a spiritual awakening process and you're starting to live your life in a different way, you're going through an evolution of what you're going to agree to and what you're going to allow and what you really want to invite into your life. And one of the main areas this shows up is in your relationships. So it's very natural as you grow and evolve, maybe contrary to what you were taught, that you're going to grow out of certain relationships. Now, if you were like me, I was raised in the church in Atlanta, Georgia, Southern evangelical. It was very hard lined on specifically marriage. So let's just jump into it. A lot of times we're taught in churches that when you give vows and relationships, specifically marriages, you are locked in right till death do us part. Well, as I've evolved, I've kind of had a different viewpoint on that because, you know, while we can honor commitments and while yes, marriage is beautiful when it works out for the lifetime. I mean, who wouldn't want to fall in love at a young age and grow old with someone and share all these beautiful memories? Well, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. And the reason why it often doesn't is because people do change. And to lock in with someone, specifically a spouse, a partner, when you're 20, 25 years old, like by the way, I did at age 22, I got married the first time. We had a great time at first, but over the years, we ended up growing. I mean, you change drastically about every 10 years in your life. You go through a reformation roughly around 20, 30, 40. We've called a midlife crisis around the age of 50. And it's only because uh, the way I look at it is it's not really a crisis. You're just going through a growth plate where you're having to let go of things and people that no longer align with you. And it can be really painful, thus the feeling of a crisis. But what's really going on in each one of these steps of growth, each one of these developmental stages of your life is you're going through a process of evolution of your identity. It is going to change. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone could come with you and that love could grow, yeah, that would be awesome. I'm all for it. But very often people grow in different directions. They have different interests, their values change. Maybe they feel like they haven't lived a side of life that they're having to live with this person. They really wanna go on adventures or date some other people or whatever it is, and the values can shift. Now, if all parties wanna work on it as specific to a marriage, if both people really wanna to go to counseling or work on their stuff and stay together, that can be a magical thing. If you can grow together, isn't that the sweet spot of a true love story? Again, ideal, but it doesn't always happen. What I don't like is that there's been this implication that we should feel super guilty about things when relationships get let go of. And this is also with friends, maybe friends that you've grown up with your whole life. That's happened to me, you know, super close friends that I had in high school. You know, I found myself when I was going through my spiritual awakening, I just didn't feel like I could relate to them too much anymore. And I had this huge story of awakening and I'd just gone through a divorce and all these complicated things that happened to me and my eyes had been open to all this new stuff. And I sat in the room with them and, and they were talking about things that I was like, oh gosh, like 10 years ago, I wanted to talk about that. But I felt like really stifled and I was like, I don't know how to relate to you guys anymore. Now, let me just say, there's no judgment. Again, you know, as you're going through this spiritual awakening journey, we have to really, really adopt the mindset of acceptance, knowing that there's no good or bad, better or worse at all. Everybody has their own evolutionary process. Some people are gonna wake up in this life to a, a new spiritual perspective and they're gonna grow in certain ways and other people are gonna float along, they may do this, they may do that, they may go up and down, they may stay the same, and it's actually okay, it's actually all perfect. Everybody has their own soul's journey. We're just not meant to stay on the path with certain people. And the number one sign that you will know if somebody maybe isn't meant to be, maybe totally aligned on your path with you, is you're just gonna feel it. It's really as simple as that. And I wish we would teach our kids this more. Trust the way that you feel around somebody. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't have bad days and get pissed off. Every relationship is going to have wobble points. Every relationship is going to have disagreement. The point is, is it just temporary acute situations where 
You know, you actually don't want to agree on everything with your spouse. The person's there to help you grow, right? You don't want to marry yourself. You'd actually be super bored. <laughs> you want someone that's going to challenge you, challenge you to new thoughts. The, the, the kicker is, does it become toxic? Does it become where you're more upset, more resentful, more disconnected than you are happy? Is there like a pattern of dissatisfaction over months? Even for me, it was years when I realized I am so different than this person now. It's almost like they grew in such a different direction and it's like, we just could never find that harmony again. Yeah, there's actually still love there. I've actually been divorced twice. There is still love there, but with both people as part of my soul's journey. Now, believe me, I was not born wanting to go through all of that. I didn't choose it consciously, but it's what happened. And the number one thing that I've had to do through this evolution of letting go of people in my life or having their relationships change, because maybe you can't let go of them because they're family or you don't want to totally erase them. The relationship just changes forms. So maybe Maybe you're not traveling with them as much anymore. Or maybe you've just got different boundaries in your life. The number one thing from a spiritual perspective that has to be in place for you to continue in a healthy way on your spiritual journey is that you have to release any guilt or shame around those transitions. So there's a scale of consciousness and spirituality that you're going to hear me talk about in almost every video that I present. There's a scale of very low density vibrations, low density emotions, okay? And the lowest density emotion that puts you in the most contracted state, it actually makes you feel small, is shame. It actually makes you have a vibrational consciousness of the number 20. Now, um, this has been studied by David Hawkins. They've done decades of research on this, what these emotions do to your energy body. The lowest vibrational place you can be at is shame. And so what brings shame? rules from the church, condemnation from parents or society, good and bad judgments on you. Anytime you feel like you're being judged or condemned, specifically with relationships, and you're sitting in a place of shame, which I did for many, many years because I wasn't following the rules, right? Like you're maybe breaking rules. Maybe you're breaking up a marriage. Maybe you're not going in the flow chart. Maybe you decided not to marry that person. And maybe you really kind of want to be single into your thirties. And oh my gosh, your grandmother is appalled that you didn't get married in your twenties. Or, and maybe it's just, it, it can be anything where you're going off of expectations that were laid for you. If you can learn to release any bit of shame and know that you were not meant to be there as a spiritual being, it's actually contradictory of your soul's essence on this planet. And that is why shame feels so bad. We learn it from our parents. We do it to our children. Everybody's guilty of it because we're taught how to do that because what is in shame is control because people want you to follow the rules. They want you to, you know, grow up, get married, do this, have your 2.5 kids and your golden retriever and follow the rules, get everything monogrammed and stay in the box. Because if not, what do you have? Total freedom. So in relationships, what I want to pass along to you as we're shifting frequencies collectively on this planet, we're going into higher vibrational consciousness. And in that there's more freedom, which is the most amazing gift you can have. And in freedom, guess what? You get to love who you want to love. You get to be who you want to be. You get to choose which relationships really serve you. And when you're in a high place of consciousness, you're doing this with grace and with love and the highest good for all, even if it means relationships end or change forms. So a really important thing that I want you to know from a spiritual perspective is that every single person that comes into your life, you actually have a soul contract with to have an experience with. Okay. So those main relationships were already agreed upon to happen. Of course, it's your choice whether or not you engage with them. You still have free will, but even each person before you came here, as you're in spirit, you agree to have different roles in each other's lives as you have in other lifetimes. And you'll know when you've been in other lifetimes with people because you're going to meet them and feel like you've already known them because you have. But we swap roles, we swap genders, we swap um, giving each other different experiences. This is where karma comes in, which I'm not going to take a dive into, but just know from a spiritual perspective that things are still being worked out, maybe from past lifetimes, or maybe you agree to learn about how it is to forgive from betrayal. Maybe you learn about how it is to forgive from being stolen from. Maybe you learn more about love. Maybe you learn how to love without attachment. Maybe you learn just how to love from a very healthy experiential standpoint. That's something that you're healing from your life and maybe ancestral wounds. There's an endless amount of reasons that we engage in relationships as temporary or as permanent as they are. And if you can understand, at least for me, understanding from a soul perspective, perspective help me to make sense of the relationships, especially the ones that really hurt me. Because if you can understand that, even though some of the most horrible things, and I've been through almost all of it, that can happen to you, 
and I know it's a hard pill to swallow. There is an agreement that you would go through this in this lifetime so that your soul can grow, so that you can learn how to be resilient, so that you can learn how to reconnect with the source within you. And very often, again, you're healing other lifetimes. You're likely healing generational patterns. At least that's the experience I've gone through. If you're, if you've been chosen and agreed to do that, you're not conscious of it. But the more aware that you are becoming in your spiritual journey, the more this kind of thing will make sense. And for me, it's actually given me total peace about it because I spent years, I'm a trained psychotherapist. I spent years in therapy, which helped so much in my healing process. They helped me heal from my trauma, from abuse, from many perpetrators. They helped me to stop with all of the um, kind of the afterplay of PTSD from certain events in my life. But when I had my spiritual awakening, it's like, it's like I went up and out. It's like I was able to see things and I want this for you, which is why I'm teaching this. It's like you see things from a grander perspective. And if you can see how there's an orchestration in your life and it all is orchestrated to help you grow, then you can make the choice, which gives you so much power. Stop sitting in the victim role from the relationships that haven't seemed to serve you and realize, you know what? There was a purpose here and I'm ready to heal this. And there are many avenues you can go through working with healers or working on your own to heal and to alchemize that negative pain. But if you can move to the next spot and say, you know what? instead of going back and repeating these patterns, I'm done with healing those negative experiences. I'm ready to cleanse my energy body, to cleanse my field, to cleanse any of these uh, negative patterns that I've continued to repeat. And I'm ready to start anew right now. Like I am done. You can say the prayer that you are done with those contracts that are painful. You can envision yourself ripping up the contracts. You can ask for it to be rewritten in, in the universal codes and the Akashic records. You can ask for help from your main guides. Energetically, you can reach out to that person's higher self and you can say, you know what, I'm done with this contract. I'm ready to move forward into a healthier life. And so in that change, everyone's not going to understand. I just talked about some really high level stuff. I went through it pretty quickly. Know that I talk about a lot of things specifically in other videos. So check out my feed and you'll find some things that specifically dive into those topics a little bit more clearly. I'm just covering this in broad today. Know that you can always change in your evolution and you do not need to feel guilty about letting go or changing those things from the past. You're responsible and you actually have responsibility can feel negative. You have the opportunity to create the life that you want. And one of the main ways that we can create the life that we want is through relationships. So congratulations. You right now are empowered to pick and choose what you want to surround yourself and how you want to engage in life with other people. So I'm going to give you some really specific steps and how to let go of people and why. But before I do, if you like this video and love this content, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button while you're here, because I would love for you to hear more about these topics as I take deeper dives into them and other videos. Let's get back to the content. Okay, let's dive into why and how you know that someone is really not meant to be in your life because they're not serving your highest good. Let's go back to the most simple thing and that is the way that you feel. How are you feeling around them? Are you feeling expanded? Are you feeling a sense of excitement? Most of the time, now this doesn't mean all the time, again, we're always gonna wobble in relationships. That's just what happens with human dynamics as part of why we're here. Most of the time, do you get excited about seeing them? How do you feel when they walk in the room? Are you feeling neutral to excited? That person's a really good match for you if you can feel those feelings. Now, if you feel a sense of contraction, if you feel a sense of dread, I've specifically had someone in my life that every time they walked in the room, like I would just be like, I could feel myself contract and it's like I would just put up this like prickly wall around myself. So what happens then is I'm going to be soliciting that same kind of energy from them. And that's never a great match because when you're on those low vibrational feelings with people, there is a mismatch. You no longer are in vibrational alignment with them. And it's time if you're feeling that over and over again to reset the way that relationship is in your life. Maybe it means you set new boundaries or that you leave the relationship altogether. So what happens when you're letting go of relationships or reforming them with boundaries is you're making space for what you want. Now be clear, if somebody, specifically if you're trying to date again, or if you know you're, you're in a relationship, a long-term one or a short-term one that you no longer feel in alignment with, you no longer hold the same values, you no longer feel super good around them and you can feel that it's time to go, you cannot call in that next person 
or the full love for yourself that may be missing because you've been giving yourself so much in the relationship until the energy of this person is removed. Now, again, we always do this with love and compassion. We want to stay away from like doing the blame game and doing the victimization blame. If you can do this from a spiritual perspective, the most beautiful way is look, we've both grown. We've both evolved in different directions. This is not feeling good for you. This is not feeling good for me. This is not a healthy version of love. You know, I want to set up either new boundaries or I want to send us maybe on our different ways because I want you to have the life that feels good to you and I want to have the life that feels good to me. And when you're doing that, the number one sign that you have done the right thing is at some point, even though I know it's challenging, you're gonna feel a sense of relief. When that relief kicks in, once you've done the hard thing, that's your soul giving you the thumbs up saying, that shift was right for you. And then what happens is you've cleared space, you've created an openness for what you truly desire to come into your life. And let me just make the point, I know that we wanna work out relationships when we've really invested in them and the amount of investment you've made in the relationship is gonna equal the challenge it is to leave it. But again, every single person is on their soul's journey. You're not here to convert them to your way of thinking, to your new belief system, to, to believing or accepting you or to thinking that you're right and they're wrong. You're here to live your soul's journey. And when you're raising up the spiritual scale and evolving and up leveling, you can do this with compassion and with joy and without judgment. I hope these tips have helped you learn how to attract and remove the relationships that are in or out of alignment in your life so that you can live a life that has a lot more ease, a lot more flow, and much better connections. Till next time. So if you love talking about things like this and relationships and really want to know how to start attracting healthy people into your life, I have a free masterclass coming up that's going to help you get on the right path. It's all about activating the rebel soul inside of you because the rebel soul that we're now coming into doesn't want to do things the old way. You want to find a life of happier relationships and more connection. So click the link below. I'd love to have you there and get you in my tribe. I'll see you there.